So welcome everybody to our continuing discussion of trigonometric integrals with part five of our discussion. So let's jump headlong into this thing and see where it's going. All right, so what we were looking at in the previous video, so we were dealing with cases where we had secant to some power times tangent to some power. And what we were dealing with in that case, so we'd worked out a strategy that we knew what we were going to do if n was even. Then we had a strategy for that one, so that case is taken care of. Then, what we were going to do, also in that video, we discussed what happened if we had m being odd. And so if our power on tangent was odd, we also knew what we were going to do in that case. And so kind of the case that we're dealing with now is how do we wrap this up if n happens to be odd and we have m being even. Okay, so this is the last case that we have to deal with in any of these situations. So if we take care of this one. So now, once we take care of this one, we've gotten all of our eventualities covered, and so we know exactly what we're going to do um, for when we are given any of these. So now let's kind of jump forward and see how we can possibly deal with this case. So kind of one example that we can start out looking at is what happens if we have the power on secant being odd. And so the power on tangent, let's say that we don't have a power of tangent. What happens when we just have the integral of secant cubed? So let's tackle this guy and see what happens. Well, what happens in this case, now we employ a strategy that uses a technique that we saw in a previous video. And so what we're going to take advantage of in this case is integration by parts. Okay, and the idea with that is we need the product of two functions. So remember our formula for integration by parts. We had a u dv was going to be a u times v minus the integral of v du. So somehow in all of this, we need to separate this out into something that is a regular function and then something that looks like a derivative. Well, what we do with that is we remember that, oh, if we've got an even power of secant, so if we've got a secant squared, then this looks like a derivative. So this looks like a dv, because remember that we've got our... Um, we've got our derivative formulas that if we look at the derivative of tangent, that just gives us secant squared. And so this thing really does look like our derivative already. So we've got our dv in hand, and then once we've got our dv, everything else just then becomes our du. So let's put this into play and just apply our derivative formulas. Okay, so what we've got, in this case, we've got u being secant of x, dv being secant squared of x dx, v then we know just becomes tangent, and du... Derivative of secant becomes secant of x tangent of x dx. And so applying our integration by parts formula in that case, let's get rid of this so we've got some room floating around in here. 
So doing that, let's see what happens with our integration by parts formula. Well, we've got a u times v, so that's going to give us a secant of x tangent of x minus the integral of v du. So the v du looks like tangent of x times secant of x tangent of x dx. So kind of putting this together and maybe cleaning it up a little bit. Let's kind of jump down here to the bottom. Cleaning that up, we get something that looks like secant of x tangent of x minus the integral of secant of x tangent squared of x dx. Okay, and so what happens in this case, now we take a look, all right, well, we still are kind of in our problem case, right? Because our problem case was where secant was going to be odd, so our power on secant is still going to be odd, so we have that problem, and our power on tangent is going to be even, so we're still kind of in our problem case. So how do we deal with this? Well, enter our trig identity. Okay, So our trig identity, what we can do is to say that our tangent squared so secant of x, tangent of x. Our tangent squared then becomes, our, with our trig identity, secant squared of x minus 1 dx. Okay. Now, where does this take us to? All right, so let's kind of get us a little bit of room. So kind of putting this together, we had our secant cubed was going to be secant of x tangent of x minus our integral of secant of x times secant squared of x minus 1 dx. So if we distribute this, So we've got our secant of x tangent of x minus our integral of secant cubed minus our integral of secant. Now we can split this up. Minus an integral of secant cubed dx plus an integral of secant of x dx. Now, it looks like, all right, if we kind of seeing what's going on here, well, we've got this integral of secant cubed on the left-hand side. We've got this integral of secant cubed uh, on the right-hand side and the left-hand side. So if we kind of take all of this and move everything over, so if we add an integral of secant cubed on both sides, what do we have then at that point? Well, we get... If we move it over, we can add them together. So oh, that's going to give us a 2 times the integral of secant cubed dx is going to be our secant of x tangent of x plus the integral of secant of x dx. Okay. So what do we do with this? Well, now... That's going to tell us that our integral of secant cubed is going to be 1 half secant of x tangent of x plus 1 half our integral of secant of x dx. So we've kind of 
kicked the can down the curb a little bit in that we've gone from one side having a power of three to the other side having a first power. So things are better if we can then turn around and figure out what the integral of secant is. And so that is really our next step. And so in solving our problem, we got it down to this. We said the inner, we need to find the integral of secant. Now, the integral of secant is kind of one of those things that um, the trick that we have for that is kind of one of those you can sit and stare at it like, how in the world did anybody ever come up with this trick? And honestly, I don't know. This is maybe just sitting and staring at it and inspiration finally strikes you. But the idea is this. I've got secant of x. And I'm going to multiply it by something. I'm going to multiply it by 1, but a very strategic form of 1. Now, what is that strategic form of 1? It's going to be secant of x plus tangent of x over secant of x plus tangent of x. Now, that really doesn't do anything. It's just multiplying it by 1. But when we distribute that secant on top, take a look at what happens. Well, so on top, we're getting a secant squared. On the bottom, and we're getting a secant x tangent of x. While on the bottom... We've got a secant of x plus a tangent of x. Now this looks like, well, okay, where are we possibly going with this? But if we stop and think now, let's do a u substitution with u equal to secant of x plus tangent of x. So that our du derivative of tangent and our derivative of secant becomes secant of x tangent of x plus our derivative of tangent becomes secant squared dx. And so what does this whole thing then become at that point? It just becomes the integral of... 1 over u du. And so we end up with, what is our final answer? Well, it's the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. But u was secant of x plus tangent of x. So our final answer is the natural log of secant of x plus tangent of x plus c. And so kind of putting this together with our um, where we left off at the last step kind of gets us exactly where we want to go. And so where we started was our integral of secant cubed, and we got down to the point where that was going to be 1 half secant of x tangent of x plus 1 half the integral of secant. And we just figured out what the integral of secant was. So our 1 half secant of x tangent of x plus now our natural log, whoops, our 1 half of our natural log of the absolute value of secant of x plus tangent of x plus our arbitrary constant. And so what this does for us when we have kind of an odd power of secant now it kind of puts us in this form where we're really doing an integration by parts that will end up kind of looping things around for us. And um, we kind of get one of these uh, cyclic 
integration by parts things where we move terms from the left side or from the right side to the left side, combine them, and then get our final answer in kind of a recursive fashion. So let's see what happens now in that case if we had um, an odd power of secant, but now we throw in an even power of tangent. What happens? So we already had a tangent to the zero power. Well, what if we have a positive even power of tangent? All right, so let's kind of see what happens now. If we take an example where we have, let's keep our secant cubed. But now let's give us a positive even power of tangent. And let's see what happens. Okay, well, with a positive even power of tangent, um, what that lets us do is to convert everything into an expression involving secants. So we've got a secant cubed, and then we've got our tangent squared, squared, which we can use our trig identity to say that this is going to be secant cubed. And so then we've got our secant squared of x minus 1 squared dx. Well, if I multiply that out, let's see what happens. Secant cubed times. So if I multiply this out, that's going to give me a secant to the fourth minus 2 secant squared plus 1 dx. So distribute my secant cubed. So now I've got a secant to the seventh minus 2 secant to the fifth plus a secant cubed. Now, what that strategy does for us is kind of get us back into the case, similar to the case that we were dealing with before. So now we have this power, we've got these kind of odd powers of secant. We've got these odd powers of secant that are there. Um, secant cubed, we just integrated that one. And so if we can come up with a more kind of general strategy to deal with um, these odd powers of secant, well, now we've got our problem totally solved in that case. And so let's see what happens when we've got these kind of more general, um, only dealing with powers of secant. So the idea is when we have an integral, with only an odd power of secant, then <clears throat> we'll develop a a recursive formula to evaluate it. Kind of remember what happened with our example of secant cubed. We ended up with something that looked like um, on one side we had 2 times the integral of our secant cubed dx. Then we had our secant of x, our tangent of x, minus our integral, or actually it was plus, I guess, our integral of just plain old secant of x dx. Okay. So what happened in this case was that um, we reduced our power, we dropped our power from being a third power. So we dropped our power from being a third power over here on the left side to only being a first power 
over here on the right. So if we can kind of continue to do that kind of in general, then it is one of these strategies where we are chopping down a tree one um, with one axe blow at a time. And that's really kind of what we're wanting to do in general. If we've got this odd power, maybe we can do some kind of um, integration by parts to drop that power down. So let's say that we do have just that, that we've got this odd power of secant. All right, so if we've got this odd power of secant, then what happens is we take out, we kind of separate those out a little bit. So we say that we've got a secant to the 2n of x. We've got a secant of x dx. So we kind of separate those out. Now, um, in the case where we're 2n, we can kind of take out two of those. Two n, we take out two more of those of x, secant of x, secant squared of x, dx. So remember the idea was that this ended up looking like our dv. And then <clears throat> for this part, we had our secant to the 2n minus 2 times secant. Well, we can put those kind of back together and say that this looks like secant to the 2n minus 1 of x secant squared of x dx. Okay. So what happens is this guy becomes our dv. This guy becomes our d, our u. Whoops, sorry, not our du. This guy becomes our u. And so what do we have? u being secant to the 2n minus 1 of x, dv being the secant squared of x, dx, v then becomes tangent, du becomes 2n minus 1, secant to the 2n minus 2, times the derivative of secant, which is our secant of x, tangent of x, dx. So kind of can maybe to clean that up just a little bit, we've got our 2n minus 1. Um, putting those secants together, so we've got a secant to the 2n minus 1. n of x times our tangent of x dx. So that now our u substitution, where our, our not our u substitution, but our integration by parts, we've got a u times v. So secant to the 2n minus 1 of x times tangent of x minus the integral of v du. Well, that's going to give us a 2n minus 1, a secant to the 2n minus 1 times a tangent squared of x dx. But then with our tangent squared, we kind of do that same trick that we did before. And we say our integral of the secant of 2n plus 1 of x dx looks like our secant to the 2n minus 1 of x tangent of x plus, or whoops, rather, minus, sorry about that, minus our integral 
of 2n minus 1 secant to the 2n minus 1 of x times tangent squared. So our integral, our tangent squared, we can rewrite um, into an expression involving secant. So we've got the integral of 2n minus 1 secant to the 2n minus 1 and then secant squared minus 1. I forgot my argument secant squared minus 1 dx. So that we've got our secant to the 2n minus 1 tangent minus, I'm going to pull that 2n minus 1 to the outside, secant to the 2n minus 1 of x times secant squared of x minus 1 dx. Well, if we distribute that secant to the 2n minus 1, what we have in that case is just going to be our secant to the 2n minus 1 of x times tangent of x minus 2n minus 1 times the integral of, when we distribute that, we get back our secant to the 2n plus 1 of x dx, and then plus 2n minus 1 times the integral. Let's move that down to the next line. So plus our 2n minus 1 times our integral of secant to the 2n minus 1 of x dx. So now what we then have is an expression where we've got an integral of the secant of 2n plus 1 on the left-hand side. We've got another expression where we've got an integral of the secant to the 2n plus 1. And so we can move those over to the same side and combine like terms. And what that will then give us is something that looks like our integral of, so 1 plus our 2n minus 1 times our integral of secant to the 2n plus 1 dx is equal to our secant to the 2n minus 1 of x tangent of x plus 2n minus 1 times the integral of secant to the 2n minus 1 of x dx. So kind of putting this together, now what we have as an integral formula, we have our 2n minus 1 plus 1, or in 2n minus 1 plus 1, just giving us our 2n times our integral, of the secant of 2n plus 1 dx is equal to our secant to the 2n minus 1 of x times tangent plus 2n minus 1 times the integral of secant to the 2n minus 1 of x dx. So kind of finally putting all of this together, we end up with our integral of the secant of 2n plus 1 dx being 1 over 2n secant to the 2n minus 1 times tangent 
plus 2n minus 1 over 2n integral of secant to the 2n minus 1 dx. And so sure enough, what we have in the case when we did n equal to 1, so we had the integral of secant cubed, that ended up just being a 1 over 2 secant to the 2, time, two times 1 minus 1 just gives us secant times tangent plus 2 minus 1 is 1 over 2 integral of secant of x dx. And so that was the expression that we had. What we were doing in kind of the previous problem, in the case when n was equal to 2, what did we have? Well, the integral of secant to the 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1 gives me 5. What is that going to be? So it's going to be a 1 over 4 secant to the... 2 times 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3 times tangent, plus 4 minus 1 gives me 3 over 4, integral of secant to the 2 times 2 is 4, minus 1 is 3. But I know the integral of secant cubed, and so that becomes one-fourth secant cubed tangent plus three-fourths times the integral of secant cubed, which was our one-half secant of x tangent of x plus one-half the integral of secant And so what was our integral of secant? That one we had as being our natural log of the absolute value of secant of x plus tangent of x. And so um, what that in turn then gives us is a recursive formula. powers of secant. And this really kind of gets us to our ultimate kind of strategy for dealing with um, this last case that we had. And let's kind of see if we can summarize that um, in one kind of final statement. All right, so the summary of our strategy in this case, what we had was that we kind of got it down to the point where we were dealing with a case when n was going to be odd and m was going to be even. So what we could do then is kind of our strategy is to say that um, since m is even, since the power of tangent is going to be even, then we could convert tangents to an expression involving secants. Okay, so what that did was then give us a polynomial fully in secants. Okay, so what that gave us, that gave us a polynomial only involving powers of secants. 
Okay? In the case that those powers were going to be even, so for even powers of secants, strategy we've already talked about. So see our previous strategy. For only odd powers of secant, there we're utilizing the um, <clears throat> recursive formula. that we just developed. And so the recursive formula, we can kind of chop down all of the odd powers, eventually getting down to a single power of secant, and the single power of secant then just became our natural log of the absolute value of the secant plus the tangent. And so the recursive formula eventually got us down to that. For even powers of secants that showed up in our polynomial, that was our previous video to deal with that. And so now this does give us to get us to a strategy where we are able to deal with all possible circumstances. So if the power on secant is even, we know what to do. If our power on tangent is odd, then we know what we can do. In this case where we've got the power of um, secant being odd and the power of tangent being even, now we've got, we just worked out the strategy for this. And so this kind of encompasses all the possibilities for all of the cases that we can deal with. Um, so we've got this strategy ahead for each one of those. This kind of wraps up a lot of our kind of trigonometric integrals. Maybe we've got one more kind of special case to talk about with product to sum formulas and those kinds of things. So stay tuned for that, but we've gotten the bulk of it taken care of, and I will see you guys next time.